Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. Today we're going to get into tuning, and specifically I tune with HP tuners, but a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about uh, will work with other platforms such as EFI Live. Uh, but before we go down that road, let's go ahead and get the disclaimer out of the way. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Welcome to the garage. Okay, now that that's over with, this is going to be the first video in a series that highlights the different steps involved to tuning a vehicle properly. Uh, so this one, we're just going to kind of go over some of the uh, important stuff to get out of the way beforehand, and then we will get into the meat and potatoes in later videos. So go ahead and uh, click the subscribe button down there. That way you get notifications whenever the rest of the series starts coming out in the coming weeks, and you can keep up. Uh, so we're looking at probably having an additional six or seven videos to cover the following topics. Uh, math scaling, which is uh, one of the important things to do even on bolt-ons. Uh, then we'll get into speed density tuning where we look at doing the fuel tables for uh, the different generations of cars. So we'll also be looking at uh, tuning for standard fuel, then tuning for things like E85 and how the two tables work together and things like that. And then we'll get into uh, the later ECUs specifically where we'll focus on having to uh, use the virtual VE tables. Uh, after that, we will look at doing timing adjustments properly and safe so we can make sure that run the max timing, develop the most amount of power while still being safe. Uh, we'll also look into uh, torque management, how it applies to the uh, Gen 4 motors and the Gen 5 motors. And then specifically after that, we'll look at torque tuning on the Gen 5 motors, which is kind of the important thing to learn uh, to develop max power on the LT1s, L83s, L86s, LT4s, and things like that. So that's something that there's not a lot of information out there yet. People don't understand it very well. Uh, well I'll hope to shed some light on that to, to make it understand, you know, more understandable. And then after that, we might get into some transmission tuning. Uh, you know, my background is I've been tuning on HP Tuner's platform for about a decade now, and I've seen quite impressive gains in the past from taking even back in the day. I took a, a 2008 Corvette right off the showroom floor, went, went out with the run flats on, took it to the drag strip, ran a 12.7, and then got it down to the 12.2s, and with an intake and headers, was it had the car running in the 11, still on the... Uh, on the, the factory run flats. So uh, there's a lot of gains to be made on a, on a factory stock tune, but whenever we get into bolt-ons and even uh, forced induction like the truck where we're looking at superchargers or turbochargers, a lot of these things, the, the process is the same. So we'll go through all of those and I'll kind of touch on the different things to look for as going through this process. Uh, some of the things that I consider prerequisites for this is one, a wide band. Listen, if you're doing tuning on your own, if you have bought an HP Tuners or an EFI Live unit, uh, and you're trying to do this without a wideband, you're doing it wrong. So I know that there's guides out there on using long-term and short-term fuel trims, uh, and they are what they are. You know, that's great if all you put on is an intake and exhaust maybe, but I would not suggest using those as, as, a, uh, as a final product for tuning. So go out there, get a wide band, spend the money. It is an insurance investment and it's money well spent. I use the AEM X series. I've been happy with it. Been using it for years on multiple different platforms from domestics and all the way over to the imports back whenever I was tuning Subarus back in the day. Uh, the second thing is that goes along hand with the wide band is you want to tune in Lambda. It's more now than ever. AFR is an antiquated way of thinking. Nobody really tunes in AFRs anymore. If you see people tuning in AFR, they're, they're probably stuck in the old way of tuning. Uh, what Lambda, Lambda allows you to do is to tune across multiple uh, fuel types but have a reference that stays the same. So to give you an example, a Lambda of one which, which would be considered stoic is the same as 14.7 on standard gasoline. And all you're doing with a wideband is you're taking lambda and it is doing the math to convert that to an AFR based on what your fuel is, if you're on E85 or gas. So if you learn from the get-go how to tune on lambda, you don't have to worry about whether or not those calculations are correct. So 
If there's one takeaway that you can learn from this video, learn how to tune in Lambda. Do not listen to people who are trying to tell you to tune in AFR. Anybody that's still telling you to tune in AFR is probably going to feed you with some other bad information out there. So Lambda, Lambda, Lambda. I can't stress that enough. Uh, the other thing that you want to do before you start a tuning session is you want to verify that you have your last tune file that was loaded or you want to download an as found from your ECM. So before you make any changes, you want to make sure that you have a file that is untouched, that will be saved, not saved over, that has the, the state of your vehicle before you did any tuning on it. And this gives you a reference point to go back. And then the next step on that is that you want to always save your tunes in increments. So if you make a change, say you adjust the timing on something, you want to save a new file, and in that description put the date and put the changes that you made. Then if you do it again, say you make another timing adjustment, create a new file, put the date on there, and then say, hey, I, I adjusted the timing another two degrees. Put all that in the file name so you have reference points. Whenever you get done timing or doing tuning like this, you should have a folder full of, of files on there. And I like to split mine up with folders by the date. So I have, if I tune five days in a row, I'll have five folders and each folder may have 25, 30, 40 files in there based on how many pulls I'm doing, how many adjustments I'm doing. And the key to doing this properly is making small increments, verifying that they're working the way that you intended, and then moving on from there. So uh, another good idea is to document changes as you go. And I'm a big proponent on this, especially on the, the front side. Open up a text file in the background. Whenever you make a change, jump over to that text file and document exactly where you made that change. What, you know, what parameter did you change? Did you change? You know, by a percentage, did you change by a hard number, plus two, minus three? Document that. That's very important at the beginning, especially because we're going to go through a lot of these things and we are going to change certain parameters to force the vehicle into a mode. So we will force out the SD tables and make it run in map only whenever we're dialing the map in. And then, you know, the opposite side of that is whenever we're doing speed density, we're going to force the map out of the picture so it never goes in the map. We want to stay in closed loop the whole time and run strictly off that fuel table. Uh, there's some other things like fuel uh, cutoff and, you know, on desail that we will disable throughout this process. It's always good that as you go through each one of those changes, flip back over to that text document, type in there, hey, on this tab, I changed this. And then whenever we're done, there's specific ones that we will re-enable, specifically things like fuel desail cutoff. Uh, so document things as you go. Uh, another good rule of thumb is right at the beginning of starting a tuning uh, a project, session, whatever, reduce the timing. Put the timing in a very safe place because we're more concerned initially about getting the fueling dialed in. Once we get the fueling dialed in, we can then start to gradually add timing back and do timing tuning and monitor that and make sure that we're safe on the timing. So, uh, you know, that's generally one the first step that we'll do. It doesn't matter if you necessarily start out with math tuning or speed density tuning. We want to reduce the timing so we're not having to fight any kind of detonation or knock uh, whenever we're doing tuning because we will be doing some... Uh, not necessarily wide open throttle pulls, but we will be doing some pretty heavy load pulls on there. And uh, we don't want to, as I said, run into any issues there. Something else that's good to do is to de uh, determine which PIDs you want to log from the get-go. And so whenever we go in our scanner and set up our scanner, it's not as important to do the histograms at the beginning because we can always go back in and have histograms the histograms are built off of the PIDs that you're logging and it's applying math to those to output them into a chart that we then use to make changes on the tune. The important thing is to get the correct PIDs logged at the, at the beginning. That being said, you don't want to log any more PIDs than you have to. So uh, we will go in, we'll determine, hey, we're looking at doing math, speed density, uh, timing, uh, torque, and then maybe some torque management. So this is the list of PIDs that we need to log from the get-go, from the start all the way to the end. And then after that, we, you want to keep your logs from the beginning to the end of a tuning session. You know, Even if that tuning session takes a month, 
keep all of your logs. You want to have reference points so you can go back and see how the car has been reacting. And it's a good idea to uh, save those in the individual day folders or the individual step folders. So you have an idea of like, these are the logs that I, I had from whenever I was doing the math tuning. And that way I know that I'm, the speed density number is in there because they'll still generate numbers. We're still going to be looking at manifold air pressure and things like that. Those numbers aren't necessarily viable, but looking at the error, the uh, AFR error on the, on the uh, mass airflow sensor tables, that's, that's the, the valuable information out of those. Uh, something else that's really good to know is, is where are all of your good tuning forms? The big ones are obviously your platforms. If you're tuning on HP Tuners, go to HP Tuners website. Uh, you know, same thing with EFI Live. There's a lot of intelligent people on there. Uh, all they're going to ask is that you search first. 99% of the time, your question has been answered. So just go ahead, you know, use the search function. Don't be afraid to branch out. If you are on a Gen 5 motor, if you're tuning for an LT1 or an LT4, there might be answers in the uh, LS3 forms. You know, a lot of these things carried over through the different generations and just had new systems added on top. And a lot of the principles are the same throughout the different generations. So don't be afraid to branch out. Another big uh, place like that is the, the transmission stuff. You know, the, the 6L80 has been a, basically the same 6L80 for, for years now. So you're not going to find all that information necessarily in the newer vehicle forms. You might find a lot more on doing transmission tuning in the, uh, you know, the, the 6 Gen Corvette or the GTO forms. Uh, and then last but not least, ask questions. If you have any doubts whatsoever, ask questions. Ask questions on YouTube here. Ask me. I will try my best to get you the answers. If I can't, I will steer you in the right direction for finding the answers to your questions. If you have any doubts in your mind, ask questions first. This is very important. You can destroy an engine just off software tuning. I promise you. I've never done it. I've seen plenty of people do it. If you're following other uh, people's, uh, you know, YouTube channels, there's prime examples of people screwing up tunes out there, and uh, you know, and people not knowing what they're doing. I was on a channel just the other day of somebody that's got millions of followers. They were tuning a C7 Corvette and couldn't figure out why they were running into fuel cut, and it was in there was an obvious reason where they just hadn't lashed the high pressure fuel pump, and yet this guy who has millions of followers does not know how to properly set that fuel pump up. So, you know, they need to ask questions. That's a prime example of everybody needs to ask questions sometimes in order to do things right. So I ask questions. That's how I learned and got to where I am. Uh, and I still have to ask questions on certain things because there's, there's new things that pop up that I'm like, you know, I don't completely understand why this is happening. I go out to the experts. So uh, don't ever be afraid to ask questions. You know, and so that's basically where we're going to start at. We, we will branch out here on the next video, and, and uh, I haven't decided if we're going to start with math tuning or if we're going to go into speed density. You know, for math tuning, it's, it, I will have to change a little bit more, but we will do live tuning on my own vehicle, so you will see the changes, see how they work, and see the outcome. So make sure you subscribe. If you have any questions, you know, it, hit them up in the comments. I will get back to you, I promise. And uh, if you find any of these uh, videos helpful, hit that thumbs up so uh, other people can find these videos easily. and We can share more information out there. And, and as always, thanks for tuning into the garage.